about a minute and a half ago, and you had the strip, and then Andrew fed you the ball, and, you and that started a run the last minute and a half or so in the first half. How did you see that play change the game, and how were you guys able to build on that momentum? Um, the game it was a game of runs and spurts. I mean, a lot of them looked into the first half and carried into the second. You know, the, our game plan was to dig off the bigs and you know, trap uh, anybody in the post and next to our game plan. And then for all of you guys, the, the feeling as this continues to build and build and it gets up to 25 points, you guys seem to be really enjoying the moment. We talked yesterday about embracing it and not shying away from it. Why were you able to do that as we continue to build? I mean, just staying connected. Um, I mean, Michigan State is, is a great team. I mean, they're a number one team. So we knew that just because we got up by that much, it was, I mean, we had a whole another half to play. And, you know, we were uh, trying to. You know, just stop as many runs as we could um, from letting them back in the game. And, you know, I think the older guys did a great job of, you know, saying that in, in, in the locker room at halftime. And we, we were able to um, keep it down and get the dub. So. It was clear right from the beginning that Michigan State was frustrated by the zone. Was that noticed in some scouting reports or something that you guys had done <coughs> prior to tonight's game? I mean, um, we do, uh, you know, when – we play teams with such a uh, dominant big uh, like Nick and you know Jackson. Um, we we usually you know try to double them, um, try to uh, make it as tough as possible, get the ball out their hands. So um, this isn't the first time we've done it, and it, it probably won't be the last. But you know, it was just a great, great scout, uh, great coaching by Coach Holt, and you know um, I think we limit their bigs to uh, Nick to one shot. So. That was, that was a key to our win. <coughs> I know you guys were aware before the year that expectations weren't super high for you guys. Um, I think some people considered it a rebuilding year. I'm not sure what, what you all considered it, but this certainly feels like it's going to change some things. Just, I, I guess, what, what does this change? Or how are people supposed to view you guys now that you were four and one the Big Ten and just beat the whole team? I mean, honestly, they can view us you know, the same way they, they have from the start. Um, uh, we're fine with that. Um, we're going to continue to uh, prep the same way we prepped all year. Um, we're going to continue to play the way we've been playing, and you know, try to get as many as, as many wins as possible. We're not really worried about what you know people are thinking, or you know, it, we're just focused on us getting better every day in practice, getting getting out there and playing as hard as we can for forty. Yeah. I guess for for UJT though, it's Nikita, you guys have been here a few years and. It's very likely there's going to be a number next to your name next week, and, and you're up the top of the ten standings. And just what's it feel like to have the program in a position to, to do some things that you guys have wanted to do in your career? I mean, that's what we came here for, is to be one of those teams that are always looked at as the top teams in the country. And we've had a down couple of years, obviously, but this is this is the start of what we, you know, in our, inside this locker room, inside this place that we wanted to get to by the end of the season. And that's just, just the start of it. Caleb. Um, I don't know if you'd played against Nick in, in high school, but to limit him to one shot, that was primarily your role. Just what went right for you on, on both ends and, and playing him in the post? I don't feel like it was good enough for my teammates and just scouting. You know, we, uh, our defensive plan was trying to get the ball out of his hands, and I feel like we did that, but we executed that plan. For Jay Sean or, or Kata, um, at what point did you guys feel, was there a, a, obviously that run to end the half, but what, at what point did you guys feel that this game had turned in, in your favor, and you thought it was it was going to go your way. Yeah, so the very end. We're obviously, the number one team for a reason. So at any point in time, you know, they could have made a run. Like the last game against Iowa, we thought we relaxed early in the first or second half, and they came back on us. I mean, that's the number one team. We couldn't do that, so we tried to play out full forty. There was no point in the game until like you know last thirty seconds. We were like, okay, we finally got this. What was Coach Holtman like in the in the locker room post game, and what does what does it do for? For him, and what, it, what what kind of reaction did he have after the game? I mean, he's, he's always emotional um, after um, after games, uh, especially wins, and you know, just the energy and to see that you know all the hard work the coaching staff and, and us put put in, and you know days prior to the game, um, it's no better feeling when um, we get in and see. Um, we get in, and, you know, huddle and dance and. I should, I should, I should, I'm, that's really good. I should know that um, I've been here four years, but um, we, we have a chin and, you know, um, we hug each other, but 
and, and he, he, he lets us celebrate for the night. And you know, we get back to work tomorrow. We got a good Maryland team coming coming uh, on Thursday, and you know we we celebrate this one today. But we we got more work to do. I mean, it's just the start of the Big Ten. So, Kaden, for for all you guys, you just beat number one. Like, how do you feel? What's your like in your heart and in your soul? Like, how do you feel right now? I'm glad we beat the number one team, so <laughs> it feels good for me. Obviously, I don't know about them too, but I mean, we all, I mean, we all knew we could do it, you yeah. know, and that's where it started. You know, you can't go into a, a team like Michigan State not believing that you know it's possible to win, and um, I think that was the biggest, the biggest factor of us winning tonight is just the belief that we could do it, and we put in the work, and that we could play with the top level uh, teams in. in in the nation, so. What did Coach say all week to get you guys as fired up as you obviously were? It, was, it really wasn't anything different than usual. You know, was, we tried to prepare for each team the same way. I mean, it was obviously a little bit more because it's the number one team on our home court. And the media guys always ask us questions. Like when Coach Mata, this first year, he beat the number one team. And it was like, oh, is it going to happen again? And it did happen again. So, I mean, little stuff like that. But for the most part, we just kind of kept things the same. Jason, we know, we know what the last couple of years have been like. The way you guys have been playing this win, is Ohio State basketball back? Is that what this is today? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, shoot. <laughs> we got a we got a long. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot of games to go, man. And you know, I, I, I we we want to keep striding. You know, we we want to you know continue to go out there and, and continue to prove ourselves and and. And we'll just have to see at the end uh, what 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 the at the end of the tunnel there is. I mean, but you know, we're just gonna keep on trying to get as many wins as pos possible. And you know, at the end, you guys will we'll make you make we'll let you make that judgment.